this day. Um, just a couple of announcements. Please silence your cell phones if you haven't already done so. Uh, we are still collecting diapers, diaper rash cream, and wipes uh, for the month of May. It's in honor of Mother's Day. Um, however, I want to also explain that we have a vision here for a new ministry that we are hoping we'll be able to start soon. Uh, we have applied for a grant through the ELCA to open a baby pantry. So all the diapers, diaper rash cream and wipes that you bring uh, this month will go into the baby pantry once we start it up. Um, and if you would like to be on the task force that's going to plan this baby pantry, I'm going to ask that you please see Carol after church. And then the other person from council who's on that task force is Daryl Murphy. So uh, if you want to speak to either one of them, we're still looking for a few people who will help us uh, figure out how we can effectively reach into the community through our baby pantry. Uh, on June 4th, we have an opportunity to glean sweet corn. I know it's a weekday, it's a Friday. Um, but if you can make it, there's a sign-up sheet in the Welcome Center. Uh, so please uh, sign up if you want to carpool with us. And then after that, we plan to have a cookout with hot dogs, hamburgers, because we are allowed to keep some of the sweet corn for ourselves. And we thought this would be a great way to uh, have a little bit of fellowship for the first time. Uh, and it will be outdoors. We'll try and keep our social distancing still, but um, we invite you to join us. Now, I know that Mandarin Messenger said it would be 12.30. Um, I'm not sure how long it takes to glean, so we're going to firm up that time, and we will let you know by next Sunday exactly what time uh, the cookout will be. Also, another exciting thing coming down the pike is 4th of July falls on a Sunday this year, and the church council would like to invite everyone to a 4th of July picnic. It's going to be at the Woodford Ranch, and we are planning uh, games and activities and really having a good celebration time together. Again, it's outdoors. If you feel safer, you can wear masks. And that brings me to another announcement, which I forgot right in the beginning, that uh, masks, because of the CDC guidelines now, are optional. So uh, if you feel safe uh, to not wear a mask, that's fine. I do thank you that you are still distancing. Uh, and um, we're just going to take whatever precautions we can uh, within those guidelines. Now, I am not wearing a mask during service. I do wear it when I interact with people uh, until you tell me, Pastor, I'm comfortable if you don't wear your mask. So let me know one way or the other what you want me to do. That way we just don't have confusion, right? Uh, are there any other announcements for the good of the community? If not, we continue now with our preach. Thank you. 
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us the spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. But 
if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they did not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I say that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. So I walked in there, asked someone I'm looking for cotton, and she told me where to go. 
and where she took me was cotton balls. <laughs> and I went like, no, that's not what I want. She said, well, that's cotton. And I went like, what do you use to mend and sew? Oh, thread. Yeah, I'd like some thread, please. <laughs> So we think we speak in the same language, yet sometimes we speak past each other. And I want to say that in this time of pandemic, I think a lot of that has happened. We might speak the same language, but we're speaking past each other on uh, video conferences, social media, in the news, even sometimes in our immediate family. Speaking clearly is not always easy. I might think I'm saying something, and let me tell you, Rob and I had a lot of fun finding this out. <laughs> I might think I'm telling him something, but he's hearing it a whole different way. Right? And vice versa. So in families, we have that. I think what's even more difficult is the careful listening that is part of a conversation. These are skills that take time, hours of practice and patience and require a great deal of respect and trust for meaningful communication to happen. So here we get to this day of Pentecost in the time of the apostles and the disciples. And on the face of it, it seems that the most miraculous thing about that day was that suddenly these people who were Galileans and who did not know other languages found themselves speaking in languages they did not previously know. I think perhaps just as equally great a miracle is that the sounds of the Holy Spirit that day drew people in who then patiently listened and heard their language spoken in the midst of that loud uproar. Can you imagine a mighty wind, flames of fire, everyone talking at the same time in different languages, that they even heard their own language spoken, I think, is a miracle. As I said in the beginning, that the older we get, the more difficult it is to learn a new language, but it's possible. But I have to ask myself the question, if I want to learn a different language, what difference does it make if there is no one to listen? If I become fluid in a different language, what difference does it make or does it even matter if I don't have a conversation partner? I would know another language, but it wouldn't benefit me or anyone else, right? Do words have the same meaning if there is no one to react to them, to respond to them? Sometimes the Holy Spirit comes to us in the quiet of our devotion time or prayer time. But sometimes the Holy Spirit flies into a room full of people and the volume is turned all the way up. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. The Spirit's arrival produced a lot of noise and an astounding flourish of light and heat. When the descent of the Holy Spirit is a communal event, there needs to be speakers and listeners, givers, and receivers. And sometimes we are both. In some ways, 
Even though we've been quarantined, sheltered in homes, social distancing, the last several months have nevertheless been very loud. Voices from every angle have sought center stage for their messages. Scientists, politicians, educators, activists, all blast as loud as they can their message, and it seems that each one's message is more urgent than the last. It's been a confusing time, to say the least, with so many loud voices speaking at once. Sometimes it's deafening. Sometimes I just don't turn the TV on for two whole weeks because I just can't take it in anymore. We become emotionally drained. The problem with that is that we are tempted to not listen at all. The daily strain takes its toll on us. In addition to the many voices competing for our attention in our village, square, wherever that is, we've been urged to still keep social distancing, literal physical distance from each other. We have been wearing masks, which makes reading emotions so much more difficult. We've been having our meetings via video conferences and then told to mute ourselves. <laughs> we have been told we can't hug each other. We cannot even give each other handshakes. Leaders have implored us to not gather out of love and respect for the other. But none of these things are part of who we are as human beings. Not gathering, not hugging, not doing these things is counterintuitive to who we are as human beings. So it's not surprising, I think, that sometimes we just don't hear the voices of reason. Sometimes we wonder why our own voices seem silenced by the louder messages. And it feels easy for us to be lost in the noise. I think it would have been easy for those in the early church to get lost in the noise of that Pentecost day. With so much at stake for the burgeoning church, it must have been a bewildering time. But you know, when the Spirit filled that place and the eyes widened and they were filled with light and lips curled with smiles and shouts of triumphant joy, messages in world languages, I think that noise was joyful and I know they were ears to hear. Because the, the Spirit filled the hearts of people that day that 3,000 of them decided to become a part of the church. <clears throat> Someone wrote this, and I quote, For speech to be communication and not noise, it must be heard. For someone to hear words, there must be a bond of trust that slows their worldly mind to really listen. For there to be trust, there must be a shared communal experience. And that is what the Holy Spirit brought to the early church community that first Pentecost, end quote. Going back to the food bank, 
No one was under any illusions that they had spoken meaningful Spanish to the man who had approached their table. Not one of them was overcome by the Holy Spirit and suddenly spoke Spanish fluently. A few remembered enough Spanish nouns to describe whatever setting was on that piece of paper, while others were a little bit more passionate and playful and mined the verbs that were there. And neither was this man able to provide much affirmation that he even understood their English. This was hardly a Pentecost moment. As I said, there was no fluent speech, there was no joyful shout of God's greatness and power. There were only a few foolish looking volunteers trying to describe their actions with the words with actions. Nevertheless, nevertheless, there were all the elements of a spirit-filled moment each time that man went to the food bank. Because you see, my friends, there was a bond of shared community experience at the food bank. There was a common human need for nourishing food and human relationship. There was a relationship of trust that had been built. One where the man could depend on getting food and seeing the volunteers each week. Their dependability made them credible to him. So he showed them his personal documents and asked for help. There was a great chasm in the life experience of the volunteers and their guests. But each week as they gathered and the Holy Spirit was there working in and among them as they made a concerted effort to communicate, no matter how foolish they looked or felt, they experienced God. That chasm became smaller. And the message of God's great power and love was shown even if the topic of conversation was a medical report or something the employer wanted to communicate. That first Pentecost day must have been a noisy mess of people speaking over each other. But you know, there were still people who were listening and ready and hungry to hear a message in their language of God's power and love, which they would have missed if they had not taken the time to listen. So I ask you this morning, will you strain this week to hear a message of love? Will you take time to listen to others a little bit harder? Where do you hear the language or message that you understand, even if it is reading between the lines, even if it is just watching someone's body language? Who is speaking? To you in ways that speaks to you. Will you know it when you hear it? How will you respond? Will you go back and try a little harder? This week I want to encourage you to yes, go out and speak boldly the good news of God's love and power wherever you are and to whoever the Spirit prompts you to go. But also take time to be quiet 
and listen when the Holy Spirit prompts you to be quiet and listen. Be ready to speak the unexpected and be ready to hear the unexpected.
people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together the deeds of power. <laughs> Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even in the sighs of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need this day. Especially our country, that peace may prevail. All who are suffering from COVID-19 and their caregivers. And for all families who have lost loved ones due to COVID or other causes. Especially the families of Ronald and Canedo and Nancy Teal, as well as the Cooksey family. All medical professionals, especially Allie, Mallory, Edson, Meredith, and Troy. All of our church leaders, especially Bishop Eaton, Bishop Suarez, and our synod staff. Our congregational leadership as they discern the path forward for our congregation. All victims of violence, prejudice, and injustice, and all families who have lost loved ones due to violence and prejudice. All those suffering from surgery. All those suffering from cancer or other medical conditions, including Chuck Swain, Donna Conway, Barb Smith, Becky Watson, Sharon Fisher, John Wiesick, Roy Miller, Anna Kalen, Dustin Darby, Pam, Peggy Shaw, Ron, Don, Alex Langston, Fred Schober, Adriana Preston, and Bill Gilbert. All those need, who need encouragement and your healing presence, especially Jesse Enderley, Ron Smith, Jerry Buckingham, Ron Spencer, Sue, Greg, and Philip, Steve Rasmussen, Kathy, Alex, Cindy, the family of Chris Peters, Barry and Margaret Johnson, Hello Elena, Debbie Robazini, Austin Gomez, Joseph M, Kay Bishop, Vernon and Velda Horton, Barbara, Richard, Charlie, Lacey, Melinda, Dolores Preston, Dick Erickick, Dave Helms, Selva Bishop and family, Tabitha, Stacy Crumley, Steve Hines, Kathy Devine, <coughs> Trey Johnson, the Johnson family, the Duros family, Pete Duffy, Mike Fessiger. All those who are homebound, especially Betty Bercy, David Keister, and Miss Sharp. And all those we mentioned in our hearts and on our lips. Hear us, O oh God. God of love, fill this congregation with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. God of hope, those who have died in you raise their eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And today we are still just waiting to peace to each other.
the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Wellspring of joy, through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses, that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 